Jose Maria Melga was the first archaeologist to discover the first Almec stone head back in 1862 and wrote this about his findings. In 1862, I was in the region of San Andres Tuxla, a town in the state of Veracruz, Mexico. During my excursions I learned that a colossal head had been unearthed a few years before, in the following manner. Some one and a half leagues from a sugarcane hacienda, on the western slopes of the Sierra of San Martin, a laborer of the hacienda, while cutting the forest for his field, discovered on the surface of the ground what looked like the bottom of a great iron kettle turned upside down. He notified the owner of the hacienda, who ordered its excavation, and in the place of the kettle was discovered the above-mentioned head. It was left in the excavation as one would not think to move it, being of granite and measuring two yards in height with corresponding proportions. On my arrival at the hacienda, I asked the owner of the property where the head was discovered to take me to look at it. We went, and I was struck with surprise, as a work of art, it is without exaggeration a magnificent sculpture. What astonished me was the Ethiopic type represented. I reflected that there had undoubtedly been Negroes in this country, and that this had been in the first epoch of the world. So, we begin our story on this controversial note. Were the Almecs blacks from Africa? The Almec are fascinating people with a great culture. The whole Mesoamerican region had a unique civilization and advancement that raised questions about who they were if they were initially from Mesoamerica or if they were travelers. Archaeologists and explorers believe the Almec culture and civilization existed long before the Mayan or Monte Albans, and they go way back to 1800 BC. There is even evidence to support their existence long before that time in places like modern-day Guatemala. The Almecs have been appropriately identified as the first temple builders in all of Mesoamerican and what is known as Mexico and environs today and it's definitely not the Mayans. Several advancements that were previously credited to the Mayans have since been traced to the Almecs. For example, the famous Long Count Mayan calendar, and others found in the Maya era, originated and was developed by the Almecs. Some of the reasons why the origin of the Almecs is shrouded in a lot of controversies include the clues of some epic Almec scripts that suggest the emergence or combination of multiple cultures that formed the civilization. Some theories support the fact that the script was from Africa. Others have argued that they may be Chinese, and another group concluded they might be Polynesians. All the arguments are familiar. The Almecs did not look like native Mexicans or even native Americans. A little more on these controversies later. All the attributes ascribed to the Almecs, like the level of their civilization, the uniqueness of their cultures, and how different they were from the other people in the region are known as archaeological civilizations. That means, based on a collection of artifacts that archaeologists thought to belong to a particular society. In essence, archaeological cultures are based on the generic appellation of the objects discovered in that areas and not on text. In this instance, scholars concluded that all the artifacts excavated in the area covering the northern isthmus of Tehuantepec dating from 1200, 500 C could only have belonged to one culture and civilization known as the Almecs. For example, the name Almec, which means rubber people or rubber producers, was not particularly the name of the people, but a scholar put it together. He derived the name from a combination of Aztec, Nahuatl, words Almecatl, the words people who dwell in the rubber nation. So, people just simplified it to rubber people. This is mainly because Almec references the place where most of the artifacts were found and the production of rubber that went on there. The Almec site is a major center of activities, with several cities emerging and known for different historical purposes. Still, none is as crucial to the story of the Almec civilization as La Venta and San Lorenzo. Modern-day Veracruz is about 35 miles on the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico and stood tall and popular around 1,150 to 900 C. Similarly, La Venta, which is modern-day Tabasco, was located about 9 miles on the eastern part of San Lorenzo around the Mexican Gulf Coast. On its part, La Venta reached its peak around 900 to 500 C. Discoveries at the locations where the Almecs dwelled revealed further information about the people and the type of diet they relied on. For example, food items like maize and other crops were not originally from the people. 
Instead, they were added because they predominantly relied on fishing and hunting for their diet and livelihood. The Almec people were credited for being skilled at creating massive structures like the many colossal stones heads found at the sites. Some of the other creations on that list include massive stone thrones used by rulers to depict power and divinity and different type of slaps that serve multiple purposes. They undoubtedly created the popular ball game, which was quite common in all the civilizations within the region. Part of the evidence that supports this is that the object of the game, the ball, is made of rubber, and the Almecs were the people close to the source of rubber, and they were pretty good with creating items from the raw material. The Almecs were good with their production of rubber items and creating structures out of the soil. They built sand structures like pyramids, ceramics, and mounds of different sizes and shapes until they were predominantly known for their unique significant size creation. Their unique structures also influenced several civilizations in the region. The Almec civilization was one of the most robust and advanced cultures that influenced the early Americas. Although in the last century we started to see their strong influence dissipate, especially with the arrival of the Common Era, the Almec civilization is still referred to as the mother culture of other societies that showed up in the regions many years down the line. There were well-known cultures like the Teotihuacan, Totonac, Maya, and Zapotec civilizations famous for their unique arts, outstanding architectures, and advanced cultures that put them ahead of the other cultures in the Mesoamerican region. However, all of these civilizations still have their origin traced back to what they shared with the Almecs at some point in time through contacts. As mentioned earlier, the people of the Rubber Nation, also known as the Almecs, were the most influential and stood out during the Mesoamerican era. All other known civilizations can trace their advancement to the Almecs. As a result of the rapid developments the people experienced in Soconusco, they settled in today's Veracruz and Tabasco or what is known as the hot and humid valleys of Mexico. The origin of the Almecs is shrouded in deep controversy, and we will look at some of these controversies later and what led to the conclusion by these scholars involved. One account believed that the Almecs possibly came from neighboring mixed silk or Mokaya civilization. The formative period primarily belonged to the Almecs because they thrived and expanded extensively in the Mesoamerican region around 1500 to 400 BC. The Almec era is divided into two. The pre-Almec cultures mainly existed from 2500 BC, but by 1600 to 1500 BC, the early Almec culture had commenced and was located in San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan on the southeastern coast of Veracruz. From their various practices and ways of life, it was accessible to how they laid a solid foundation for other emerging civilizations in the region to copy, adapt, and make improvements. It was also clear that the Almecs practiced bloodshedding rituals. Whether it was a human sacrifice or animal sacrifices, the controversy is still on. Some scholars have put the commencement of the Almec civilization at 1400 and 1200 BC. However, some later excavations and discoveries have since adjusted the origin to 1600 to 1500 BC. These discoveries were at the shrine in El Minati, San Lorenzo. Eventually, the Almecs adopted the diets available in the region, like farming maize and other food crops. There were signs of farming being a major source of livelihood from some of the remains discovered at Tabasco and further suggested that they likely started around 5100 and 4600 BC. These diets and food items were also adopted by later Almec civilizations just as they did the technologies. The development of the Almec people and their culture was made easy by the ecosystem, consisting of well-watered alluvial soil. In addition to that, the Coatzacoalcos River Basin provided the people with a great transport network. There has been a strong comparison of the Almec environment and climate with other advanced civilizations like the Nile, Indus, and Mesopotamia. The productive nature of the environment ushered in a good and bad experience for the people because the dense population started giving rise to classes. Eventually, the elite class emerged and pushed for the production of unique items to differentiate the Almec culture. This would lead to producing some of the known luxury artifacts, symbols, and sophisticated items. Several of these luxury items made from magnetite, jade, and obsidian were out of the reach of the lower class of the population. They were items for the rich, 
and the fact that they came from outside the Almec society does buttress the point that the people had extensive trading activities within the region. There are three likely sources named as the origin for the high-valued obsidian found among the Almec elites. For example, the most luxurious jade found among the Almec elites has been traced and found to have originated from the eastern part of Guatemala, known as the Montague River Valley. It could have come from El Chael, which is closer to the Almec society in the highlands of Guatemala. Other likely sources are Puebla and San Martin Gelotepeque. These locations were only some kilometers away from the Almecs. A few sites shed more light on the Almec culture due to some Almec artifacts found there. One such site is the Mescala culture which is in modern-day Guerrero. There was more Almec's type of artifacts found there than those found in the Veracruz, Tabasco sites. A city known as Teopantecuanatlan in Guerrero is one of such cities relevant to the Almec culture. One other relevant object from the Amuco Ablimo site, an apparent Almec creation that dates back to 1530 BC, was found in Guerrero. The colossal heads have turned out to be synonymous with the Almec civilization. They molded human heads from massive stones or large pieces of movable rocks. They are of different heights from 3.8 to 11.2 feet. Some of these heads have been found to date back to 900 BC. The question has been asked what these heads genuinely represent, or if they were worshipped as gods or if they were a representation of some royalties. It would seem more like the latter dues to the different features on the faces. Most of the heads were that of matured adults with the following features. Fleshy cheeks. Slightly crossed eyes. Flat noses. Headdresses. Frowning or smiling faces. The back of the stones is often flat with no unique designs since they are not meant to be seen as much as the front. To further bolster this point, these features are still found among the locals of modern-day Veracruz and Tabasco. From the remains found at the sites, it appears the carvings took place at the Sierra de los Tuxlas Mountains in Veracruz and then moved to other locations within the civilization. The massive size of the stone heads and the carving location revealed that the final products might have been transported either through a chain of humans or some means of transportation. The distance covered in moving these stones is sometimes up to 250 kilometers. All these efforts put into the sculpting and movements of the stones further suggest their relevance to the people. The heads either represent some powerful leaders or some influential elites in the societies. The efforts that go into each head almost made them uniquely different and evidence that they were carved after particular individuals and not just a general production. Some of the heads were even carved wearing headgears, suggesting a representation of royalty or warriors. In the whole region, the Almec colossal heads stand out and are unique to that civilization. José María Melgar Serrano discovered the first colossal stone head officially in 1862. However, due to poor data collection and management, the discovery was not recognized or reported outside the shores of Mexico. Fast forward to 1938. The same site was excavated by Matthew Sterling, which led to the Almec civilization's archaeological study. Within the Almec region on the Gulf Coast of Mexico, there were 17 stones heads found from four sites. Generally, most heads were carved from slightly rounded rocks or stones. However, two unique designs were found in San Lorenzo Tenochtitlan carved from giant stone thrones. Another structure was found in a nearby site in Guatemala, specifically at Takalikabaj. It was a stone throne that looked like it was carved out of a colossal head. Also, it was the only structure that was found outside the Almec society. Arriving at an actual date for each of the monuments remains a major challenge for researchers and archaeologists because many of them were tampered with before the commencement of archaeological investigations. However, several of these colossal heads have been dated back to the early pre-classic period of 1500 to 100 BC, while a few others to the middle pre-classics of 1000 to 400 BC. The least colossal head weighs around 6 tons, while the bigger ones vary between 40 and 50 tons. It is important to note that the enormous, colossal head found seemed to be uncompleted and abandoned close to where the stone originated. The reasons remain unclear. As mentioned earlier, the origin of the Almec seems to still generate quite a controversy among scholars, researchers, and archaeologists. 
Some suggestions contradict the generally known and accepted origins of the Almec civilization and attribute it to have originated from other cultures, with Africa at the top of that list. Those who push these theories claim that contact with another world outside the Mesoamerican region might have led to the origin of the Almecs. While these ideas of other origins have been famous, they are still not accepted as the official position of mainstream researchers who are well versed in the region's history. Although these theories are considered fringe, the history of the Almec civilization will not be incomplete without talking about them. Several scholars have been pushing the idea that the Almecs originated from or were related to people from some part of Africa. These experts have based their theories on their personal opinion about the interpretations of some of the features of the Almec artifacts. They further believe that the manner of speaking, way of life, genetics, general mannerism, and the structure of the bones found at the sites looked like those from some part of Africa. The first person to push the idea of the African connection of the Almec is the scholar who discovered the first colossal head in 1862 at Trace Sapotes, formerly Huyapan, Jose Melgar. In the published paper, he likened the colossal head to that of a Negro race. The opening in the publication was later proved in the early part of the 20th century by Leo Wiener and a couple of other scholars. Some modern-era supporters of this idea, like Clyde Admad Winters and Ivan Van Sertema, have further narrowed down the origin of the Almec to the men people in the western part of Africa. These researchers and scholars mentioned earlier, along with other modern-day proponents of the idea that the Almec's origin came from Africa, claimed that the writing systems found in Mesoamerica, which we have traced to the Almec civilization, look very much like the African scripts. Here's how some push their claims. Although we do not propose an overt Afrocentric view of history, we are here to stomp out the pseudo-history of European colonialism of the 19th and 20th century which sought to belittle the achievements of Africans, reducing our people to the back pages of history. Let us know in the comment section if you enjoyed this introduction to the history of the Almecs of Mesoamerica. Leave a comment and let us know if you would like to know about part 2 of this history of the Almecs. We appreciate your time and curiosity. Tune in next time for another riveting tale of African civilizations.